All right, Kara, thank you for joining us today on the road of recovery to share your recovery journey. I was wondering if you could do an introduction for us. My name is Kara Young. I started my addiction at 15 years old with prescription drugs and I got clean two and a half years ago. And the program that I went through and graduated from, I now work for. That's great, I love that. So uh, can you tell me a little bit about your childhood? My childhood was great. Like. My mom's a retired teacher from the same school that I went to. My dad retired from the county. They were great parents growing up. That's good. Yeah, they were. I, it's okay. Every year for Christmas, mm -hmm. we would go down to Florida to see my grandma and grandpa and spend Christmas in Florida. So I was 17 the first time that I was stayed in Ohio over Christmas and got to see snow. Oh, okay, wow. So that was different. That is different. Yeah. Yeah. So, how old were you when you first experimented with drugs? Fifteen. I had a number of health issues that the doctors, they kept telling me I was crazy, it was all in my head, I needed a psychiatrist. Come to find out, at 18, I almost died from Crohn's disease. How did it impact your relationships with your family and friends? Oh, it was, it was disastrous. You know, um, my family tried to come to me a few times about, you know, you need help, we need that, we want to help you. Of course, I didn't want to hear any of that right then. You know, I was too far into it and I I was, my life's never going to amount to anything. I'm just going to be sick all the time, so why not be comfortable and be sick? So that's what it turned into. And I said things to my parents that I would never say sober. So, never. I know that feeling well. Yeah. So were you in any relationships throughout life that kind of had fallen apart because of your use? No, not really. As far as like boyfriend, girlfriend relationships, um, I did have one boyfriend during that time who um, was very abusive, um, but I, he helped get drugs for me. Yeah. So, I, you know, I just dealt with it. You know, and I, sh I shouldn't have, but I did. I just accepted it, and you know, this was going to be my life, and I just had to deal with it. Yeah. And can you share a story or two that really illustrates what life was like during your addiction? The biggest, I would say, is it felt like okay, so my house my, that I've lived in was the trap house at the time, and um. It felt like I woke up one day and all these people were just in my house. And I didn't know how to get rid of them. They were supplying me with drugs for a place to stay, so I let them stay and it just continued to escalate. And before I knew it, they were kicking in my doors. I got raided. There was four or five of us with warrants, including me. We all went to jail. Uh, when I went to jail, I was 98 pounds. Yeah. So no, it had well. completely taken over my life. Yeah. Yeah. Meth psychosis. Yes. Can you tell a little story about that? Yes. Okay. So for I was just talking to one of my friends a couple days ago about it. Mm -hmm. um, she was in active use when I was in active use. And I said, you know, I don't understand why every window in my house I put like four blankets over. Nobody could even see through the curtains. I don't... It's beyond me why I thought, oh, I need to put these blankets up. You Can know? you talk about your legal issues? Um, I would, had about two years prison time hanging over my head. Um, I got busted with about a gram of meth and maybe a half gram of heroin on me. Um, they impounded my car and I, it was, I literally got pulled over right in front of my house coming home. It was all downhill from there until I came across Holly at Angel Intervention. Um, she saved my life. And uh, I graduated her program. It took me on and off for about four years to graduate. Um, I graduated in October and about a month later, she offered me a job. That's great. What was it like for you? What was it like for you? It was like uh, the biggest thing I learned was how to love myself again because I realized through the program that if I didn't love myself, I couldn't love anybody else. Did you have an overdose? One. 
woke up in the hospital not knowing you know what was going on I, I was at my friend's house you know I didn't all I could remember was just darkness and it was the most horrible feeling in the world and after that um, I came back to Holly's came back to Angel Intervention um, completed my program that time I went on my own now before when I had went to her it was I was in trouble I was in treatment in lieu I needed to get the help for court mm -hmm. for almost a whole year I would come home from treatment for a month because this is how the insurance company paid for it I went back to treatment for a month I was home for a month and back for almost a whole year I did that and then I had the overdose and I just kind of woke up and was like, you know, you need to change your life or you're going to die. And so I went back to Holly and told her, you know, I'm ready. I need your help. Thank God she helped me. Yeah. It was, so the last time I was in treatment, I was at Access in Dayton and I was there for nine days and I just, I literally just woke up one day and said, fuck this life and I left and I came home and I never touched anything again but I went back into Holly's program so I had her help I had you know my my classmates help you know we all just kind of bonded together and took care of each other and it was finally nice to have friends that weren't trying to get me high yeah. you know that was a big thing like when I would come home from treatment so many people because it was the trap house so many people would show up on the doorstep would call me would i changed my i've changed my number three times now mm -hmm. <laughs> i know i finally have one that i'm not giving out um it's nice to not get that that influence on me anymore um i don't know if it was the changing the number or I stopped answering the door. I stopped answering text messages. I stopped, you know, being a part of that world and started being more part of our angel world mm -hmm. where we all just supported each other, held each other up. It was the it was the best curve. That's great. I've made the best friends that's that's literally who my friends are now, are yeah. people that have graduated, people that are still in the program. You know, that's that's my circle now having that willingness to change yes. what 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 was that first i had to experience all the shitty stuff you know i ha i feel like if i wouldn't have experienced that yet i would still be in active use i had to discover what my ruin was my ruin was going to treatment going home going to treatment going home and i didn't you know i didn't want that life and it's it sucks to say but even losing my child wasn't my ruin. It was the realization that I didn't want that life anymore. I knew I had it in me to be sober, to have a normal life, to pay my bills, to be responsible and all those things. It just, one day, like I said in treatment, it just kind of clicked in my head. And I was like, fuck it. This is not what I want to do with my life. And then I, I officially went back to Angels with the intent that I was going to do that program no matter what it took, graduate, and become a better person. And I did. Work, what do you do to maintain your recovery today? I work for Angel Intervention Services. It gives me purpose. I have a hand in helping other people now. And that's the best feeling in the world. And I love my job. What do you do? I'm technically the receptionist. I do a little bit of this and a little bit of that, but I help contact resources to get people to inpatient. If they want to come to our program and they're in active use, we send them to inpatient before they can come to us. I spend a lot of what time I don't spend at work, I spend a lot of time with my mom and dad. And we have a great relationship now. I love that. So let's talk a little more deep in that. How are your relationships today? Very good. Um, I have a boyfriend. We've been in a long distance relationship for um, about two and a half years now. Next summer, he's gonna move here. So we're, we're taking things slow. 
you know, one day at a time, um, my little sister, I finally have a relationship with her and her kids mm. and that I've missed so much. I missed a lot of their lives, but I'm just happy that I'm there now. And so is she, she tells me that all the time. So, yeah. and that relationship with my mom and dad, like before, there's no way I would call my mom to go to the grocery store with me. Now I'm like, mom, can we go to the store together? <laughs> I love it. I know a lot about that as well. So. Yeah. What dreams have come true for you so far? I've always, my whole life, I've always wanted to do something that helps other people. And I just never could fulfill that. And then I got into the drugs and then it was like, oh, well, I'm helping these people get high. And it kind of, you know, suppressed that feeling for a little bit. But then I, you know, when I started trying to get sober, I was like, you know, I just really want my family back. That's the number one thing. Is I'm so blessed that they didn't kick me to the curb. You know, they they put up with a lot, and uh, I try to make the damage up to them as much as I can. Do things around their house when I'm there. You know, help mom with this or help dad with that or things like that. Um, and like you said, self care is so important because if you can't take care of yourself. You can't take care of the other pieces of your life. Absolutely. What hopes do you have for your future? I hope, honestly, I am so over the moon with the job that I have now. I just want to continue to move forward and get better at what I do and help more people because I needed the help at one point and somebody reached out and helped me. So I want to be that hand for somebody else to get them help and get their life together. Can you describe a feeling that you received from recovery that was not there in, in, in addiction? Actually, I would say very blessed. Um, I'm blessed to have my family. I'm blessed to have Holly and my, my angel family because they're just as much family as my blood family is. You know, I, I would reach my hand out and do anything I can to help anybody who is trying to do the right thing and trying to move forward with their lives. What are some intangible gifts that you've gotten so far? Love. That's the biggest one. Absolutely. What about tangible gifts? Um, I would say my job. You know, I'm hands-on. I, I do some a little bit of case management with some clients you know mm -hmm. I help them get into new doctors new um, get their um, Medicaid and things like that you know I'm I'm very hands-on with them with trying to get the next step ready for them so that they can achieve what I've achieved and I want everyone that I've had a hand in helping to do better than me right. you know I want them to exceed it succeed in their lives and be happy. Um, what have you learned from your addiction? Anybody can get addicted. It doesn't matter if it runs in your family. It doesn't matter if it's your friends. It doesn't matter. You know, when I first started, nobody I knew used. But I used. When I was 15, you know, taking my um, painkillers to school with me, you know, because I couldn't get through the day without them. And the doctors just throwing more and more and more at me. You know, I never had to run out. And it was like that for the better part of my addiction. And it was the painkillers, the, the pills that the doctors prescribed that got me started. And then, you know, when my tolerance went up too high, that's where the street drugs came. How long did you start doing, how long did you do that for? Um probably about four years. What words of hope could you share for someone who is trying to get sober? There is help out there. There are people that want to see you do good in life and want to help you. You just need to have the courage to reach out and seek the help. There's so many 
support systems. There's so many um, treatment centers and places you can go to get your life together to help you live a good life. Reach your hand out and ask for the help or accept the help if it's being reached towards you. Do you have a spiritual program today? Um, eh, okay. kind of. Like, I'm kind of like, I believe a little bit of each religion, so I'm kind of like, I don't believe in the organized religion stuff. I don't believe that's the way to get to where your life is going to go when it does end. I think it's within yourself, you know, not necessarily. You go to church on Sundays and that's your way into heaven or, or if you don't go your way into hell, you know, I don't, I don't think that there's certain things that are going to, I, I think it's just within yourself, within what you believe. Um, I do believe there's good and evil. I do believe that some people are just evil and they're destined to hell. But I just, like I said, don't, don't really believe that it has to be an organized thing for you to make your way into heaven. Absolutely. Is there anything that you've missed that you'd like to share with us? <sighs> Things that you were probably thinking about the last five days. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's what I did. <laughs> My mind was We're just We're overthinkers, <laughs> aren't we? <laughs> yes. I think the biggest thing is how fast it can excel. Mm -hmm. Just like one day I woke up and all these people are in my house. Mm -hmm. Some of them I didn't even know. And I didn't do anything about it. I just continued to self-serve. You know, if you're going to you're going to bring me drugs, sure sleep on my couch you're gonna bring me drugs sure sleep on my floor I got an extra bedroom upstairs that was always occupied mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it can ha I just I just want everyone to understand that this can happen to anyone anyone anywhere at any time We appreciate you coming out here today in Van Wert. Uh, your story is going to help so many people that think they're alone and that there is no hope. Um, you are proof that there is a way out of addiction. Yes. Thank you so much. You're welcome.